Welcome back to Todd's Take. Not a bad week for us here uh, on the show as we went three and one with our top rated selections. Miami Dolphins let us down for the second straight week. However, Caesars Palace has allowed me to come back to continue to work with you guys over the course of the season, unlike Miami special teams coach John Bonamigo, who won't be back with the Dolphins anytime soon. Looking over some of the trends we've seen so far through the NFL season, underdogs continue to produce at an absolutely amazing clip, going roughly 60% through the first four weeks. Always good for the home team and the house as well here at Caesars as we continue to see underdogs biting on the NFL card. Maybe see a shift there, but we'll get to those games in just a little bit. As for Derek and Brandon, we'll address your college football inquiries as part of this week's episode. Let's jump right in though with the flagship matchup this week in college football as the number one ranked Alabama Crimson Tide roll into South Carolina to take off a rested, take on a rested Gamecock squad. Alabama's looked great over the last two weeks, rolling into Fayetteville, beating Arkansas to the tune of 24-20, and absolutely dismantling the Florida Gators one week ago, 31-6 down in Tuscaloosa. However, like our friendly course over ESPN says, not so fast, my friend, as this will be the third straight challenging matchup for the Alabama Crimson Tide, and we actually think South Carolina will give the Tide all they can handle. Look for Steven Garcia, much maligned quarterback who's been turnover prone in his past, to try and settle the troops and a steady dose of Marcus Lattimore, as we believe the Gamecocks will be in it till the final whistle with a chance to upset the top-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. Switching to an earlier SEC matchup, to answer Derek's question, we'll look at the Tennessee-Georgia game, where Georgia enters as a heavy, heavy favorite. Georgia's been much maligned over the past four weeks, losing four straight for the first time in Mark Rick's tenure as head coach. Last week in Colorado, they came up a bit short, but the silver lining to that was the return of A.J. Green, which gave Georgia the passing attack they've been looking for through the early portion of the season. Despite the heavy price tag and a slumping Georgia team, we'll look to back the Bulldogs here. As Tennessee, you got to imagine that they don't have much left in the tank after coming up short against LSU last week. That pass defense has not been great, allowing 500-plus yards to UAB, Conference USA doormat, and we think that Aaron Murray and A.J. Green will connect for 200-plus yards and look for Georgia to win comfortably in that game. So switch gears to the NFL for this Sunday. Three games catch our eye, and it's not easy to back two winless teams like we'll do this week with the Buffalo Bills and the San Francisco 49ers. Buffalo enters this week's matchup against Jacksonville, fresh off an 0-4 start, but if you look deeper into their schedule, lost three games to division rivals, and their only road, lo their road loss non-conference-wise, they traveled to Green Bay where they were handed a big-time defeat. Look for Buffalo to take advantage of Jacksonville in a prime sandwich spot, coming off a rare upset win of Indianapolis at home, with a home date against the Tennessee Titans on deck. We'll back the winless Bills to get in the win column for the first time this season. Headed out west for the Sunday night primetime game, we'll take a look at San Francisco, who also enters 0-4 against the Philadelphia Eagles team still searching for an identity without quarterback Michael Vick and Kevin Cobb still trying to feel out his role in the offense. However, the biggest injury looking at the Eagles is the injury to LaShawn McCoy and a broken rib. He's going to be severely limited, we believe, facing a very tenacious San Francisco linebacking court. We'll look to back the 49ers in this spot in what amounts to a must-win situation and a chance to get them in the win column for the first time in 2010. Our third and final NFL selection will take us to the nation's capital as we'll take a look at the Washington Redskins as a slight home underdog against the Green Bay Packers. The Packers have been beat up throughout the course of the season. Injuries all over the defensive side of the ball. Morgan Burnett was out. Brandon Chiller continues to nurse a shoulder injury. And now an injury to Nick Barnett in the linebacking court. The Packers struggled last week to put the Lions away, escaping Lambeau Field with a 28-26 win. Washington's one of those teams that's seen their stock on the rise for the past few weeks. We'll look for them to make a statement and continue the momentum that they built last week at Lincoln Financial Field and beat Green Bay at home and pull off an NFL caliber upset. In answering Brandon's question about the Pittsburgh Notre Dame game, there hasn't been a team probably more disappointing in college football this year than the Pittsburgh Panthers. Heisman hopeful Deion Lewis is yet to get on track and they've actually switched to Ray Graham as the featured back in Dave Wanstead's offense. Tino Sinceri continues to provide questions more than answers in the Pitt's passing game However, the Irish, laying a heavy price tag, may not be comfortable in this favorite role. Lost in the box score last week in Chestnut Hill was the fact the Irish only outgained Boston College by 25 yards and were lucky to get out of there with a 31-13 lead, excuse, excuse me, and post a victory. This game could come down to the wire, but it's a game we'll elect to pass on. Once again, thank you guys for all submitting your questions. We really appreciate it. It makes the show worthwhile. 
And checking out here from Caesars Palace, it's Todd Furman on Todd's Taken. We're taking it to the bank.